One of the more frequent problems we see in foot and ankle surgery is treating deformities of the little or lesser toes, right next to the great toe. As you see in this picture, this is an example of a toe deformity in its corresponding x-ray. I find that these problems really don't occur in the younger people. Notice this graph from a study we did several years ago. It shows the people in their 50s, their 60s, and their 70s, these are the people that developed these type of lesser toe problems. What specifically do we see that bothers people so much? Well, in this sort of sideways diagram of a normal foot in a shoe, we see on the left, it fits fine in that toe box. And then on the right, we see the deformity has occurred, and now there's pressure on the toe as it pushes against the upper part of the toe box and it becomes uncomfortable. Sometimes callus grows or develop on the top of the toe and it can become infected. And we try to trim these down, as you see here, so that we can decrease pressure areas. Another frequent problem that we see is the desire of patients to wear shoes that place pressure on the lesser toes. Here we see some examples of some high-heeled fashionable shoes with pointed toes. And these put a great deal of pressure on the lesser toes. It's hard to believe as you see this photo that this foot actually belongs to this shoe. Now note that when we take x-rays of the shoe and the foot inside that shoe, with a, uh, without the shoe, there's very little pressure on this, but when they're inside that fashionable shoe, there's real constriction on the lesser toes. And over time, deformities may develop. That's why it's important early on for people to try to use roomy shoe wear. And we see some nice examples of this where there's room for the lesser toes in the shoes. The story may just start with a toe or toes that are just longer than their neighbors as we see in this example. In time, callus develops and later on actual deformity may occur. And that's what often brings patients to our office to seek a solution. Now, when we evaluate a problem, we initially want to see if the toe deformity is flexible, as we see in this photo, or if it's really fixed or rigid and unchangeable, as we see in this example. Now, early on, we may try various conservative methods to alleviate pain, such as padding these toes. And this is an example of a different type of pad we use. It's a tubular gel pad. And the, this is another example of one that we can slide on the toe. We also use pads uh, underneath the foot, as sometimes these are pressure areas that can be relieved. Even prefab orthotics with pads or custom orthotics may be helpful to alleviate discomfort. We also attempt to get patients into a roomy shoe that reduces pressure on the toes as well. And this is an example of a low-heeled shoe with a very adequate toe box, both side to side and top to bottom. There's a lot of room. And there's even extra room so that you could put an orthotic inside to relieve pressure on the foot. In time, if these methods don't work, surgery may be necessary. So let's look at different problems, very common problems that we see and see what we do to solve these problems. And first, let's look at hammer toes. The hammer toe is the deformity of one of the small toes. It's actually this joint that's closer to the base of the toe. This photo is an example of a hammer toe deformity. If we decide that surgery is indicated, this diagram really explains what we try to do. We make a small incision on the top of the toe release the ligaments, and remove the prominent bone in the toe. This shortens it slightly, but allows us to straighten it out. We often use a temporary pin, as you see here, to hold the toe in place. And we also frequently use an internal pin or an implant that stays in permanently. Here we see a couple of pins that will come out and the deep pin that will stay in place. This is an example of a before and after photo of a hammer toe deformity. Now let's go to mallet toe deformities. The mallet toe is very much like a hammer toe, 
but it actually occurs at the next joint down, closer to the toenail. These are examples of different types of mallet toe deformities. Otherwise, the treatment is very similar and the recovery is much the same as well. Often, we just use two pins to hold these repairs. These pins stick out from the tip of the toe and are removed three weeks after surgery when the stitches are removed as well. This is a diagram that shows you the procedure itself where we remove the bone and then we place the pin. Now let's go on to another deformity and we call these corns of the fourth and fifth toes. It's a common problem that we see with corns and calluses that develop in the fourth and fifth toes. This photo is, shows you a hard corn that really occurs on the outer aspect of the fifth toe and it's very painful and it rubs against the shoe. A soft corn or a kissing corn, these develop between usually the fourth and fifth toes. As you see in this photograph, it may look like an infection or athlete's foot, but really is due to pressure. We pad all these problems, but when they don't get better, we shave the underlying bone. And this is a before and after photo of a soft corn repair. So now let's talk about how this surgery is accomplished and what the recovery is like. The surgery may be associated with other surgeries like arthritis of the big toe or bunions, so the recovery may be figured on what is the most complicated and involved part of the surgery, and it may not be the lesser toe that we're talking about. Sometimes there are other problems that complicate the surgery, making it much more involved and make the recovery process longer as well. But when we do this surgery, it's done under an anesthetic block the nerves are anesthetized so the foot is numb, and then the patient is typically sedated so they're unaware of what's going on. It's done in an outpatient basis, a patient goes home that day, and is seen in follow-up one or two days later. We change the dressings every week, and often the patient is involved in these dressing changes at home and may do some themselves. We keep the foot absolutely dry, no submerging in a bathtub or a shower, until the sutures are removed three weeks following surgery. And really, at that three-week point, the sutures and pins are both removed. When you walk, usually you use a post-operative shoe, and this is an example of this, and we use these for about six weeks, as the toes are often very swollen, and it's hard to get into a regular shoe. Crutches may be used for a few days, but soon weight and walking on the heel is permitted or even walking on the side of the foot. Now this is an example of swollen toes, and in time swelling does go down, but they may be swollen for a longer period of time. The older you are, the longer it takes for the swelling to go down, and it could take several weeks or even several months. Pain after surgery can be moderate. It usually is relieved with pain medicine, and very quickly, you should be able to get off your narcotics and to get to Tylenol or an anti-inflammatory pill. We don't typically use ice as we're concerned about the circulation to the toes and to the foot, but we do certainly elevate the foot after surgery. The major risks of surgery are a deformity that can come back or recur or other angulation that may occur as well. That's why we use pin, pins and why we're careful to avoid restrictive shoe wear for several weeks after surgery. I do worry in cases where there is a severe deformity that circulation to the toe can be impaired after an operation, and there is always a small risk of losing a toe due to poor circulation, although quite frankly, this is quite rare. Our ultimate goal here is to take a crooked, stiff toe and to realign it, but it won't be mobile. It will be a stiff, straighter toe, and that should fit nicely inside a shoe and be quite comfortable. Other things can occur associated with toe problems like nerve problems or bunionettes or more severe toe problems like we see in this photo. And that's why we get x-rays and do careful evaluations to ensure that we treat all these problems at the time of your surgery. You might want to look at some of our other videos online that talk about these problems. But with your help and your patience, we hope to correct these lesser toe problems. People think that just because these are in the little toes that they're really not very important, but in fact, they can be very painful and very important to correct 
and to realign.